So now we're going to start taking a look at what's called modular arithmetic, and then this is going to become an incredibly crucial part of the work that we do later on in number theory. So um, first I want to define something called modulo. So if A and B are integers and M is a positive integer, then we say that A is congruent to B if A minus B is divisible by M. Okay, so let's kind of like just take a look at what this means. Right. And then we're going to a little bit later on, we'll look at uh, um, maybe a more common or easier way to think about uh, this idea of congruence. All right. But let's just take a look and we'll say, all right, we had uh, 21. We saw before and nine. OK. And let's say, for example, we want to know um, what is it? And we write this as mod six. OK. Are these two, in fact, congruent mod six? So 21 minus nine is going to equal 12 and 12 is divisible by 6 so 21 and 9 are congruent modulo 6 and how we write that is we're going to write that as 21 and we're going to have these three little lines 21 congruent 9 modulo 6. So those two numbers, in fact, are, in fact, uh, congruent to one another. All right. We can see another one. We could look at another one. Say, for example, we want to know um, 33. 33, right? We'll take that 33 minus 9. That's going to equal 24. 24. 6 does, in fact, divide 24. So 24 is congruent to 9 modulo 6. Okay, M, right, this value like 6 is called the modulus. And this relationship right here is called the congruence. Let's look at a proof. So notice that this is an if and only if, and so since it's an if and only if, we've actually got to do it in both directions. So we're going to start out with, we're going to let A be congruent to B modulo M. And so what it means to be uh, congruent to uh, A being congruent to B modulo M is so M divides A minus B, All right? Then we're going to use the division algorithm. We're going to let a equal m, that's our, this m right here, times some quotient, quotient, call it q1, plus r1. And we're going to say that b is going to equal m q2 plus r2. Okay? q1 uh, is possibly different from q2. r1 is also possibly different from r2. Okay? And we should state that q1, q2, r1, and R2 all belong to the integers. So A minus B okay, is going to equal MQ1 plus R1 minus MQ2 plus R2. That is then going to equal, and if we kind of just rearrange these things, it's going to be MQ1 minus MQ2 plus R1 minus R2, which ends up equaling M times Q1 minus Q2 plus R1 minus R2. Now by definition of the division algorithm, R1 and R2 are both greater than or equal to zero and less than M. So, what that means is that R1 minus R2 is going to be greater than, strictly greater than negative M. Okay, that's the smallest it could possibly be. Okay, if we happen to actually have that R1 equals um, 0 and uh, R2 equals M minus 1. And also, it'll be then strictly less, less than M. Okay, if it turns out that R1 equals M and R2 equals um equals zero. Okay, or excuse me, R1 equals M plus one and R2 ends up equaling zero. 
So we've got this, that R1 minus R2 is going to be between, be between negative IM and M. Now, by our assumption, M divides A minus B. So that means that M also divides this. Okay, so M divides, right, M times Q1 minus Q2 plus R1 minus R2. Okay. Now, if you remember, what we had is is that uh, earlier on when we talked about division, if we have um, a a number that actually divides, right? Um, if we have a factor, right, that is. So here's how this goes. So m right divides this whole thing so that actually means that we already know that m divides this value m times q1 minus q2 because it's m times q1 minus q2 where q1 and q2 are integers right so we also need to we must have that r1 minus r2 is also divisible by m okay so since um m times q1 minus q2 is divisible by m Visible by M, this means that R1 minus R2 is also divisible by M, or M divides R1 minus R2. All right, well, if M divides R1 minus R2, and also that M is between negative M and M, all right, there's only one value in there that actually uh, is. It, it, one value between negative m and m that is in fact divisible by m as well, okay, and that's zero, right? So r1 minus r2 must equal zero, okay? As negative m less than r1 minus r2 less than m. Thus, r1 equals r2. Okay, I'm going to scroll down just a little bit because I'm going to finish this up. So R1 equals R2. So what that means, right, and just here's a note. So remember that we had A is equal to MQ1 plus R1 and B equals MQ2 plus R2. Okay, so R1 equals A mod m and r2 equals b mod m what that means is that since r1 equals r2 that implies that a mod m equals b mod m and that's the first half of our proof so now we're going to take a look at the second half of our proof okay and that states, all right, we're going to start with let A mod M equal B mod M. All right, so we'll let A equal M times Q1 plus R and R1 and B equal MQ2 plus R2, all right? R1 equals A mod M, and R2 equals B mod M. So R1 equals R2, all right? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that definition of what it means to be congruent. So we're gonna say A minus B is gonna equal M Q1 plus R1 minus MQ2 plus R2, which is going to then equal MQ1 minus MQ2 minus R, uh, plus R1 minus R2, okay? But R1 equals R2, so... A minus B 
equals MQ1 minus MQ2, right, plus zero, which just equals M times Q1 minus Q2, okay? Since uh, Q1 and Q2 are integers, A minus B equals M times some integer B, or not B, let's call it M times C for C belonging to the integers. So M divides A minus B, okay? Thus, A is congruent to B mod M. And that proves it in both directions. Okay, so what we basically did was we utilized that division algorithm in order to kind of help us along in terms of our proof, right? Okay, and the idea that this mod, A mod M, B mod M, those are the remainders inside of the division algorithm, right? And as I said before, this is actually going to become like really handy. Like I would rather personally utilize A mod M and B mod M, right, or the remainders after the division algorithm in order to classify things rather than thinking about a to a minus b for every single value okay i kind of want to you know think about like classes of objects right and i'll show you i'll give you an example of that in just a minute so let's look at a proof of how this uh this might work okay so let's take for example we'll look um at 24 okay 24 mod 7 and um, we'll go with 45 mod 7. Okay. All right. So 24 is going to equal 7 times 3 plus 3. Okay. Thus, 24, 3 equals 24 mod 7. And 45 is equals seven times six plus three. So what we end up with is, excuse me, 45 equals seven times six plus three. So three is equal to 24, uh, excuse me, 45 mod seven. Okay, so there we go. Now, according to this last theorem, thus 45 is congruent to 24 mod 7. Okay, 45 is congruent to 24 mod 7. Um, and we can check that. 45 minus 24 is going to equal 21, which is divisible by 7. All right, so they are equivalent. Right? What we say is, is that they're congruent to one another. It's called a congruence class. Right? And we can, in fact, even think about what are all the things that are congruent here. Right? So in mod 7. So for example, okay, let's take another example. Or let's set up a set of examples. All right. 1, 3. Okay? 3 is equal to 0 times 7 plus 3. So 3 is equal to... Um, Three mod seven, that makes sense. Okay, ten. Ten is equal to one times seven plus three, so ten is equal to ten mod seven. Okay, seventeen is equal to two times seven plus three. Okay, so seventeen is equal is equal to. Or excuse me, ten. Let's take for example. We want to look at. Um, we want to know about one hundred and nineteen. Okay mod 25, okay? And in addition to that, we wanna know about um, 94 mod 25. Are these two in fact congruent? Well, 119 is equal to 25 times four plus 19, okay? So it is equal to 19, all right? And 94, is going to equal 25 times 3 plus 19. So it's also equal to 19. Okay. Thus, 119 is congruent to 94 mod 25. And vice versa. We can actually also say that 94 
is congruent to 119 mod 25. It's going to be mod 25. I'm going to put that in parentheses to make it very clear. All right. Cool. Now, what I would like to discuss is one of the offshoots of this actually happening or this occurring. Like, what? Why is this so important? Okay, it has a lot of important uh, offshoots. I mean, it has a lot of important ramifications. But one of the things is is to kind of like put all or a whole group of values, okay, um, into what we call congruence classes. All right, so we've got this idea of a congruence class, and that is a group of integers that are all um, congruent to each other modulo a certain certain integer. Okay, so for example. If I wanted to know I had a, and I want to know a modulo um, a modulo six, okay, and we'll say that a is equal to four, four modulo six. So let's think about what are all the values that are four modulo six. The first one that comes to mind is four, because four is equal to zero times six plus four, right? So its remainder, see that has a remainder of four, okay? So Right, we just say that uh, that is uh, sorry, four e equals four mod six. Another one that would be there is is ten. Okay, so ten is going to equal one times six plus four. Okay, so ten is equal to four mod six. Right, and that means as a result that four is equivalent to is congruent, excuse me, to ten mod six. Right, so they are now congruent. And notice the parentheses come in when we talk about the congruence between two values. What about 16? Well, 16 is going to equal 2 times 6 plus 4, right? And so consequently, 16 is equal to 4 mod 6. It has the same remainder. And so now we would say, in fact, that 4 is congruent to 16, which is also congruent to 10 mod 6. So defining that modulo, we now have three numbers that are actually congruent to each other. And you might notice that what we're doing is we're just adding another six each time. I started out with four, right? I add another six, I ended up with another thing that's in the congruence class, okay? I add another six, I ended up with another thing, value inside of the congruence class. 22 is gonna equal three times six plus four, okay? And so 22 is also gonna equal four mod six, okay? And in fact, I can write down Okay, the entire set, we'll call it S, right, is equal to, and you just imagine, um, we'll have 4, okay, uh, 10, 16, 22, okay. You know what another one actually happens to be? Is negative 2, right? Because negative 2 plus 6 is going to give me 4, or 4 minus 6 gives me negative 2. Another one's going to end up being negative 8, right? Okay, so notice that's the difference of 6. Difference of 6, okay? Just like these guys are a difference of 6. And so we can actually have members of the congruence class that are also negative, right? In fact, you can also have modulo that are negative. It's not a problem, right? And so, so on and so on and so forth. And these guys, what we're going to do is we're going to see, can we find some things that they all have in common, right? This is kind of what mathematicians do a lot. They look at something and they say, oh, okay, so these are all, they're all congruent to one another, modulo six. Well, what does that mean? What might be important about that um, if, you know, I don't know, if we want to do some cryptography or if we want to, like, um, you want know, to break codes. That's what that cryptography means. If we want to break codes. What uh, might be important if we want to find primes, okay? What sorts of things might be really valuable, right? Like, we don't know maybe not know okay so this s okay these everything in s is the set of all a right congruent to b modulo six or congruent excuse me a congruent to in this case four modulo six right so we just maybe use four 10 is congruent to 4 modulo 6. Negative 2 is congruent to 4 modulo 6. All sorts of things. All right. Let's choose another uh, set. We'll call it T. Okay. And let's say, for example, in this case, right, maybe we'll take a look at the set and we'll say, oh, well, what, what is that congruent to? Let's start out. It's 2. 
and then 5, and then 8, 11, okay, negative 1, negative 4, um, 14, all right? Well, if I look here, the difference here is 3, all right? I've got 3, 3, 3, 3, etc., okay, so on and so on and so forth, 3 when I subtract, right? So t, right, is equal to the set of all a belonging to the integers, right, such that a is congruent to, and this is 2, right? So we could just choose 2, I could choose 5, I choose any one, but 2 mod 3. Okay, and that's another congruence class. Whole group of, uh, of elements that actually are all congruent to each other. So let's take a look at a basic theorem that kind of builds on this idea of the congruence class. So let m be a positive integer. The integers a and b are congruent, modulo m, if and only if there is an integer k such that a equals b plus km. All right, and so basically all this is saying is, is that uh, we can add some multiple of m onto b and end up with a. All right? Or, in fact, subtract if b actually ends up being negative. So let's take, for example, we saw some other ones. So let's say, for example, that we have, um, we're going to let m equal 3, and we saw that we had, like, negative 1, okay, um, mod 3 was equal to 2, and we also saw that 5 mod 3 was also equal to 2. Okay, so they actually ended up being in the same congruence class. Now, so what that means is if we take a, we'll let a equal negative 1 and b equal 5. So negative 1 is going to equal 5 plus, and then, so m equals 3, so we need some k times 3. Well, in this case, k is going to equal negative 2, right? And so this is just another way of showing, in fact, that they are, in fact, congruent. This ends up becoming more important when we're working with proofs, but sometimes we might, you know, necessarily use, utilize this when, we, when we're doing some more advanced number theory work, right? So we kind of just want to see that, in fact, that this is always the case. This is always true. And the converse is also true, all right? So suppose, okay... All right, suppose that we had two values. So we'll take like a 9 and 21 are our values. Okay, and m equals 6. Okay, so we could take that 9 is going to equal, or excuse me, 21. Okay, 21 equals um, 9 plus 2 times 6. All right, and so by our theorem above, this implies that 9 is equivalent to 21 mod 6. And you can just go in and actually prove that that's the case. They, have, they end up having the same remainder when we divide them through by 6. So our next theory, uh, theorem, excuse me, uh, once again allows us to kind of like make some other distinctions uh, about modular arithmetic. Uh, it allows us to do more with modular arithmetic. So let m be a positive integer, and if a is congruent to b mod m and c is congruent to d mod m, then a plus c is congruent to b plus d mod m, and ac is congruent to bd mod m. So let's take a look at an example, or a couple of examples. Let's consider 5, which is equivalent to 11, mod 6, and 3, which is equivalent to negative 9, mod 6, all right? And you can actually check for yourself that those two are equivalent, all right? So 5 plus 3, right, equals 8, and that should be, by our theorem, 8 should be equivalent to 11 minus 9 in mod 6, okay? So is it the case that 8, so, like, is it true?
that 8 is equivalent to 2 mod 6. Mod 6. Well, 8 equals 1 times 6 plus 2. Okay. And 2 equals 0 times 6 plus 2. So 8 is, in fact, equivalent to 2 mod 6. Great. So that kind of plays out. That's nice. At least one of our examples is shown. This is not a proof. If you want to look at the proof, there's a proof actually in the book. Um, and you can go into that one. Now, if we look at the multiplication, 5 times 3, okay, right? A times C is going to be 5 times 3, okay? And supposedly that's going to be equivalent to 11 times negative 9 modular 6, okay? All right, well, that's 15, yes? And 15 is going to equal 6 times 2 plus 3. Great. So that tells me that. And then 11 times 9 is negative 99. So negative 99 is going to equal, okay, let's see. Okay, uh, negative 17. So 6 times negative 17 plus 3. And so 15 is congruent to negative 99 modulo 3. Hey, it works out. That's kind of nice. All right, let's take a look at another example. So in our second example, so we'll consider that 13 is equivalent to 23 mod 10, and that 7 is equivalent to negative 13. All right, so 13 plus 7 Okay, is equal to 20, right? Okay, and we want to see is, and then we've got 7 plus negative 13, or excuse me, 23 plus negative 13 is equal to negative 10, or positive 10, excuse me. So is 20 equivalent to 10 mod 10? Well, this is actually kind of obvious, isn't it? 20 equals 2 times 10 plus 0. And 10 equals 10 times 1 plus 0. So 20 is equivalent to 10 mod 10. Great. Now, what about the multiplication? We'll take 13 times 7. Okay. Is that going to end up being equivalent to 23 times negative 13? mod 10. Are these equivalent? So 13 times 7 equals 91, and that's equal to 9 times 10 plus 1. Okay, so 1 equals uh, 91 mod 10. Okay, now 23 times negative 13 is equal to negative 299, and that's equal to um, negative 30 times 10, okay, plus 1. And so 1 is equal to two, negative 299 mod 10. So it is the case that negative 299, right, the multiplication, is equivalent to 91 mod 10, all right? So we're going to utilize this uh, particular result. It's going to be kind of going to come in handy, especially when we start doing linear congruences, and um, yeah, when we start doing uh, and some of our other algorithms.